welcome back to, to Energy Wednesday, the state of clean energy. I'm Sharon Moriwaki, co-host, co well, no, hosting today <laughs> <laughs> with <laughs> special guest Lauren Ton Tonokawa from Excel Energy Accelerators, or what is it? Elemental, Elemental now. Uh, mm -hmm. Elemental Accelerators mm -hmm. now. Jay's on vacation. He's cruising Alaska, so I'm here with Lauren, and we will guide you through 100% innovation today. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been pleased to have Lauren with us uh, through the month of July, telling us about all of the innovations that uh, Elemental Accelerator has been working on. And I'm really pleased she's closing our series to tell us about not only elemental accelerators, but innovation to 100% renewables, and also about a bigger picture and what's on the horizon. So welcome mm -hmm. back, Lauren, and thank you for hosting the series with us mm -hmm. and being mm -hmm. our special guest today. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me, Sharon. It's been a pleasure to join you and Jay for the month of July. Thank you. So tell us, um, what, what are the big innovations that you see um, coming on? Oh, Lauren also has a, an, a column in the Star mm -hmm. Advertiser on innovations and uh, entrepreneurs, and I wanted to pick Lauren's brain and have her share with us what's on the horizon as well as what she sees in, in all of the entrepreneurs and innovations um, that she's mm -hmm. been interviewing and, and developing. Yeah, um, I think in a previous show I, I had mentioned we we're in due diligence and selecting our newest cohort of companies, our 2018 cohort. Um, and this year has been our most diverse applicant pool. Mm. Um, so we've, of course, seen a lot of energy companies, um, but we've also seen a lot in the mobility and transportation space as well as water, um, cyber, and IoT mm. as it applies mm -hmm. to energy. But and all areas, all interconnected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's interesting to see um, how a very similar technology, especially in software, can be applied to solve different problems. So are most of the companies software companies, or are there more heavy equipment type companies, or um, some planning companies, or are they mostly all in, in innovative software? Yeah, almost all of the companies that apply have a software component, um, but a good amount also have hardware um, or offer a service. Um, so we get all three types of companies, and usually um, there's a handful of them who blend hardware, software, and service together. So for the viewers out mm -hmm. there um, who are interested and are innovative, mm -hmm. um, what are the kinds of criteria you look for if, if not totally software, not totally hardware? Uh, what do you look for in a company that you can help grow? Yeah, one of the things we really look at is the team and the people involved. Um, and beyond the technology, the team, and their experience, um, whether the founder or CEO has started a company in the past or um, if they have experience in a startup and raising money um, and their ability to be collaborative. Um, those are, are qualities of a strong team um, that we've seen in some of our companies and also applicants. Um, and that somewhat relates to the Star Advertiser column, am I right? Um, which you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to interview people in our ecosystem, because um, at the end of the day, it is the people um, that drive the innovation forward. So mm -hmm. how do you select these people um, to interview, or what, what do you <laughs> look for for your column beyond the elemental accelerator? What, what's, what, what's kind of like the what, what attracts you to, to say, yeah. hey, I want to interview you. I want to know more <laughs> about your company. Yeah, um, well, through the work that I do, I've been fortunate enough to meet a number of very interesting people. Um, my, the first person I interviewed and the person I kicked off my column with um, was a colleague of mine, Maurice, Ka uh, Maurice Kaya. Yeah, nice, and yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every time anyone hears his name, it always like brings a smile yeah. to their face. So I, I thought that he'd be a great person to interview, and I just enjoy talking to him in general. Um, he has many stories of hard and good times 
um, mm -hmm. working mm -hmm. in this space in Hawaii. Um, and we've been fortunate enough to keep him around. Yeah. yeah. So what is Maurice doing these days? <laughs> a detraction, but yeah, we all interested in Maurice yeah. and what he's doing. He he's almost mm -hmm. like the father of cl clean energy here in the state. <laughs> way back, way back when. <laughs> yeah. I mean, after spending two decades at the state energy office, um, and then breaking off. Um, to start what would become Elemental Accelerator with Don. Um, he's been enjoying family time mm. um, a lot mm -hmm. more, which is great. Yeah, he has yeah. a, um, a couple of grandkids oh, that he good. visits yeah. pretty often. Yeah. Give him our regards. We miss him. <laughs> we miss seeing him. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He's still around. Um, oh, good. Yeah, he's good. at our office every once in a while. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you have to keep him yeah. around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, his wisdom yeah. is irreplaceable. Yeah. So what are the other guests that you've interviewed or, or people that you've interviewed for your columns and, and where are they, you know, and how they've moved along? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I've, I've interviewed a couple of our entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. um, one in particular had made the tough decision to wind down the operations of his mm -hmm. company. Oh. Um, so mm -hmm. seeing the other side of the startup, mm -hmm. you hear a lot mm -hmm. about being able to raise money and yeah. Yeah. new customers and new partners. Um, but often start, startups and entrepreneurs and the CEOs and founders have to make tough decisions as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so one of the quotes that stuck out to me was that, he said, um, as a CEO, you have to be unrealistically optimistic, mm. but at the same time, you have to want to kill your company. You have to want to poke holes in it, and where you can't poke holes is where you find success. Mm. Um, That's great. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. it's a good adage to live by if you're an entrepreneur, you're really yeah. looking to the future, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. So you, and, 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 I mean, and part of it is most of the people are going to be in that space, right? I mm -hmm. mean, very few are really successful and really can take off. Yeah. I mean, but we look for that success and what are the ingredients. Right. And yet when it doesn't work, how can you be sort of realistic and, and also um, um, a good manager to say, hey, yeah. I, I you know, need to move on to something else. <clears throat> yeah, the ability to fail forward and use each experience mm -hmm. as a learning mm -hmm. experience um, mm -hmm. is something we also look for in great entrepreneurs and great people um, to invite into our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. good. So mm -hmm. what other lessons learned that you can share with the audience on, <laughs> on innovation, entrepreneurship, clean energy, and the space um, on how you develop and grow. I mean, even through failure, you grow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. One of the so my last column, I had the chance to interview um, a person by the name of Guy Kawasaki. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's another name we all know <laughs> from Hawaii. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, -huh. mm -hmm. uh He grew up in Hawaii. Graduated from Iolani School, uh, the class of 1972, I believe. Um, and then uh, eventually in his career went to go on to work at Apple in the 80s and 90s um, and is um, a widely known name in Silicon Valley. Um, his his um, professional career has been mostly in tech, so not specifically energy or the areas that we focus on, um, but still you can, just talking to him, you can tell he thinks like an innovator and an entrepreneur, like focused on pace and focused on not like breaking the status quo. Um, so talk a little bit more about that, the pace and the not breaking the status quo, because everybody thinks you've got to build and you've got to move. And, you know, yeah. what is that pace and what is that uh, way in which you have to move forward without going too far ahead so that mm -hmm. you, you lose the the market, I guess. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you uh, you can't build a company in a bubble. Um, so, in my conversation with Guy, I was talking to him. Um, he was asking a lot of questions about what's happening in Hawaii, what's happening in the energy space, um, and we were talking about Hawaii's goal to get to 100% renewable energy. 
and I told him the goal is to reach that mark by the year 2045. Um, and his only question was, why so long? And mm. um, and why why would that why would it take that long to get to 100% renewable energy? Um, and that to me like is the mark of an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. innovator. They're always thinking so they can go faster. So did he have suggestions as to how you would move it along faster <laughs> <laughs> in 2045, like, you know, in 10 years? Or yeah, I, I mean, he didn't offer any specific s suggestions since, since energy isn't his domain. Mm -hmm. um, but he, I mean, he's aware that the technology is out there and it's not a matter of technology, it's a matter of people and, mm -hmm. and the place and policy and will, yeah and innovative thinking mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And frameworks. Mm -hmm. So based on all of these people that you've talked to mm -hmm. and knowing entrepreneurs that you've grown along the way with the mm -hmm. elemental accelerators uh, and before that energy accelerators, mm -hmm. what do you think are the essential ingredients to making it all happen, to innovation to 100%? Mm -hmm. I mean, just, you know, sort of Lauren's Prophecy. <laughs> 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 Seeing what you see, knowing what you know, um, and experienced, mm -hmm. what kinds of things you think are the, the key ingredients that we need to really move it forward? Because we've kind of been mm, sort of treading water a little mm -hmm. bit. We go a little bit. We kind of say, yeah, we'll try this or we try that. Mm -hmm. What might be some things that you've gained? over the years yeah well I, I can tell you what we look for in in people just beyond them having a strong business and technical background um, the collaboration piece is is really important mm -hmm. to us and the ability to listen um, and really listen to people in this ecosystem if this is your market mm -hmm. um, and get to know their pain points um, and be able to quickly adapt your solution and your the way you um, communicate what you do um, to meet those pain points mm -hmm. um, and and within our portfolio and within our cohorts we select companies um, that have potential for collaboration mm -hmm. and that can work together to solve a particular problem um, and so being open to working with other startups in our portfolio um, in a collaborative versus a competitive way. Okay, then hold that thought for. on collaboration and what that means versus competitive because mm -hmm. we're going to take a short break and we'll be right back and hear more about collaboration to get to 100%. <laughs> You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Aloha, my name is Raya Salter, and I am the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate, and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable, and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum, from clean energy technology folks to community groups to to politicians, to regulators, to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at one o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Welcome back. I'm Sharon Moriwaki, co-chair of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And with me today is my special guest here from Elemental Accelerators, Lauren Tanukawa, who is the communications lead for mm -hmm. energy. Yeah. Elemental, I have to get used to that, yeah. Elemental mm -hmm. Accelerators. Mm -hmm. And before the break, we were talking about 
collaboration, the importance of collaboration for any, any success to get to 100% or any success in the market. Uh, and she was telling me about teams versus family and how that perspective will change and be much more uh, effective mm -hmm. if you look at a, at a team instead of a family. So I wanted her to explain to us what that means. Yeah, we've been, um, we describe our portfolio of 53 companies as sort of the elemental, an extension of our team. Um, and we think of it like a high performing, like professional sports team. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where, um, where entry is earned um, and you become, like once you're entered into the team, then the team is you and you are the team. Um, and I, I think of like two really great teams that stick out in my mind. Um, the Yankees of the 1990s <laughs> <laughs> and the Celtics in 2007. And one of the quotes that really sticks out to me is from Derek Jeter um, when he was ending his career with the Yankees as one of the best shortstops to ever play the game. He said every day he felt like he's every day when he stepped onto the field, he felt like he was earning his spot. Even though he had all the accolades, had all the stats, mm -hmm. was the starting shortstop for decades, um, he still felt the pressure uh, and the motivation to perform and earn his spot on the field. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's sort of how we think of our portfolio and, and even our team. You know. So that's mm -hmm. why when we were talking um, over the, the last month, that each of your um, cohort members mm -hmm. feel part of the team. So they come back and they contribute and they help each other along within the cohort as yeah. well as their successors yeah. coming in. Mm -hmm. And when one, of, when one company succeeds, we all celebrate as um, a portfolio and as a So that part sounds of the like a family system. to me. So how is that different than a family <laughs> as you were mentioning? Yeah, I mean, uh, there are definitely elements, family elements mm -hmm. um, within. I guess you can't kick a family off a team. No. <laughs> Not that you would kick anybody off your team no. because it seems like it solidifies you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there is a bond between us and our companies and between, like, myself and my, my team members and my colleagues that I work with that is very, like, a family. It's like a family. Yeah, yeah, we all share the same values, we're working toward the same mission, um, but we're all um, working extremely hard to be able to achieve that mission. So what, what binds, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can see, you know, I come from the psychology background yeah. uh, where we say, oh, it's cognitive dissonance that if you go through a lot to get in <laughs> and you're accepted, then mm -hmm. even if you have to earn your, your place on the team every day, mm -hmm. uh, you feel that you've You've been through a lot of stress that that you know you you're, you're bound, so to speak. But yeah. but is is there something more than that, or is it the the you know once you earned your spot, you want to keep your spot? <laughs> um, I mean that maybe that's a way in which um, our team isn't necessarily like a professional sports team. Um, it's less competition and more collaboration. Once you get on the, on the team. Yeah. Um, once you're either hired into our organization or a part of the, the portfolio, um, we're all looking for ways to uplift ourselves as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, and we're all working towards a really similar mission. And, to and align we talk way. collaboration because mm -hmm. that's kind of the buzzword these days, <laughs> collaboration. Mm -hmm. Uh, integration. What are the elements you think that have been most effective in in your collaborating and people feeling that they're part of this team and it's a it's a mm -hmm. bond yeah. uh, to do better? I don't know if it's the values or the mission. Or what what are those elements um, to have that kind of strength in in going mm -hmm. forward together and helping each other? Mm -hmm. together? Yeah. One one thing that we do as a team mm -hmm. is um, we're very open. Um, so we have open meeting policies where any team member can attend any meeting 
on the calendar. Um, and this is anybody in the cohort or anybody on the staff? Yeah, anybody on our staff. Mm -hmm. um, and that helps to create um, a sense of bond between our team um, and that there are no walls, um, no barriers um, to access information. Um, and it helps us, as especially me, in communications mm -hmm. do my mm -hmm. job better. So I know what's going on with other um, parts so of how, our team. So, so what is the team, the staff team at Elemental? Is that communications and like yeah. the management? So the way we're organized are in circles. Um, so there's a communication circle, there's the operations circle. And operations covers what the uh, staffing or the, the yeah, internal HR, organization? Yeah, HR, admin, okay. um, contracting for our companies. Um, so there's communications, operations, and then there's our portfolio circle where we have one person leading our go-to-market track and another leading our demonstration, um, and then a couple other team members leading partnerships specifically for the companies in there. And then we also have a partnership circle, which are which manage and build our global partner program. And is that is that part of the cohorts? They come out of the cohorts, or that's separate and apart? They're separate partners? And where, where do the cohorts, no, the um, graduates, you know, where, what, what circle are they in? Yeah, <laughs> so, that, so that's like our core team. And beyond that, we have our portfolio companies. I see. And the portfolio companies are different than your cohort graduates. Uh, they, uh, our cohort graduates make up our portfolio. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and the affiliates or the partner partners external to that are like what kinds of companies are those? Are they are where mm -hmm. you intern people or? Yeah, so our, our global partners are folks like Hawaiian Electric um, as well as General Electric, so GE and their venture team, um, TEPCO, which mm. is the utility from Japan, uh, Vector, which is a utility in New Zealand. Oh, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, and, and we have a number of other um, partners similar to those that um, uh, are strategic for us as well as our companies. So, mm -hmm. and the partners are helping, I mean, with the cohorts, I mean, they help train the cohorts, or is it broader than that, the funding base and, and sponsorships of things? Is that yeah, they're, kind of general? They're interested they in the companies in our portfolio, um, either from an investment standpoint or um, in collaborating and doing demonstration projects with them. So, and, and are there governments also? Or are these all mostly just private companies? Yeah, so we have public and private um, partners. So the Navy is one of our biggest funders and a part of our global advisory board, um, the Department of Energy and the state of Hawaii. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are three public partners. Uh, mm -hmm. uh -huh. so, so when you talk collaboration, because collaboration we think of as the private sector and the public sector and how can we get them together and within the public sector, how can mm -hmm. we get different departments or different sectors mm -hmm. of, of the public, mm -hmm. of government together. Um, have you had that kind of challenge or working with any of that in terms of helping your companies thrive? Um, yeah, um, that's part of the reason and the impetus for building the Global Advisory Board um, is to bring like the, our startups to these um, larger and more established um, organizations like the Navy, like the State mm -hmm. of Hawaii, like um, the utilities within our Global Advisory Board, um, and help them implement innovative projects and solutions into their, their business model, their operations. Mm -hmm. Okay, well let's go beyond elemental and mm -hmm. um, kind of see where the, what you've learned over the years and where you see the horizon uh, for energy, you know, we're, we have a daunting goal, although Guy mm -hmm. says, oh, well, why, it can be done <laughs> next year, right? Mm -hmm. But if we were to look realistically into the future, we look at what you've learned in collaboration, public-private sectors, as well as innovative minds and collaborative hearts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what do you see on the horizon and what do you think we really need to do for government to support, for policy to drive? for the market to be developed mm -hmm. um, from your perspective of having met all of these numbers of people who are interested in the energy space 
as well as beyond because everything's integrated water energy mm -hmm. egg mm -hmm. terra viva that we were going to yeah. meet, you know um, yeah. what do you think so we're looking actually at what you just mentioned the nexus of energy and agriculture the nexus of water and agriculture transportation okay. and energy um, and we're looking at companies who can um, thrive at that nexus can um, so for example Tariva is a really good example they're an agriculture company but their crop produces um, biofuel um, that can contribute toward our energy goals um, and water smart is another example their software company a resident for monitoring controlling residential water usage mm -hmm. um, so they're working with the board of water supply on that um, and but water is very interconnected to energy because it takes a lot of energy mm -hmm. to pump water and water to mm -hmm. to um, um, like refine oil for electricity um, and so we're looking at companies that operate in multiple industries um, whose solution can impact multiple industries. Because that is, everything is interconnected. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you had one minute to tell the audience mm -hmm. um, what is it that you learn and what is on the horizon that we should be excited about for the next five, ten years, what might that be? And tell us. Yeah, I, I think we can, we can be excited about um, like innovation thriving here in Hawaii and building that here locally. And it's not just the startups um, who are innovative, but it's everybody in this ecosystem that has the potential to, to be innovators and, and think differently. And we should proceed and we should mm -hmm. really not think that we can't do it, but think that we can always do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. And thank you, Lauren. We've yeah. really appreciated your bringing us this whole month of innovation mm -hmm. and entrepreneurs. And I do want to remind people that this month, we are, or next month actually, August 28th, will be our Hawaii Clean Energy Day. Hope right. you come too. Yeah. Uh, and we are focusing on pathways to clean transportation. And you can register now uh, at our website, which is hawaiienergypolicy.hawaii.edu. And uh, we have a really full, full uh, program as usual. And this year we are going to be uh, not only having people speak to us and with us, but giving you an opportunity to have dialogues. Uh, we have Dr. Um, Richard Lum, who's with uh, Vision Foresight Strategy. He's going to start a conversation among us and uh, see if we can get some targets, some metrics, and some real action to clean transportation. So join us. Okay. And uh, thank you. And aloha. Thank you, Lauren. Aloha. Thank you, guys. Yeah.